Ernie, not time for nap time. Time for dream time, but awake dreams. Be awake and be dreaming. Future is awesome. Dream about it. Live it. Create it. Be a part of it. This is it. Last episode of season one of the I-5 Crash Course series. We're going to talk about what the future of the Space Force is going to look like and what you can do to shape it in a way that you may like to look like, see it, like it, see. As you should probably know by now, the Space Force is an ever-changing military branch, just like how the Space Domain is an ever-changing domain. And it's only gonna get even more crazy. SpaceX back in late April shot about 50 Starlink satellites up into low Earth orbit from Cape Canaveral. NASA's planning on, or maybe they've already actually done it, I don't really know. Uh, maybe they've done it by now? I mean, as of, as of this video, they haven't, but they're, they're, probably, they're probably going to. Anyways, they're taking us back to the moon. But this time, for good. We're not doing that thing where we like have a hiatus and just don't do anything for space for a little bit. I mean, I guess we've always done the space. I, I... <sighs> space. This is also going to be the first time a woman and a person of color have landed on the moon. Also, remember when I told you it was kind of unclear if a space race was really still going on? Well, with NASA essentially building upon all of its current partnerships, not every space-minded individual is on the same team. Russia and China may have different plans that may be less humanitarian than ours when it comes to space acclimation. And with a world that is constantly getting more tensed up, space and its utilization is only going to become more and more vital. Yet still, many people question the need for a space force, at least right now. Now in my opinion, there's no such thing as a premature space force. In fact, I think we should have started earlier. I mean, come on, we sent people to the moon in the 60s. It was like a really big deal. The space domain is going to be the most important domain that we must utilize to maintain our presence on the global stage. It is really good to see that we have space interests sparked up in the nation once again, though. Thanks, SpaceX. Thanks, NASA, and all the cool stuff you do. Thanks to all the private companies we talked about in the previous video. Thank you guys all. Thank the Space Force. Let's rock. Okay, I, I, I kind of went, went on a tangent there. I meant more like uh, people probably are wondering like why we needed a separate military branch just focused on the space domain. Now, in my opinion, I kind of thought of it this way. I looked at the different branches and kind of what they did. We have a branch for the land, for the sea, for the air. Why not have a specific one for space. I think space is a really big domain. I think the Air Force has a lot to focus on if you give them our entire atmosphere, including low Earth orbit and greater deep space. I, I, I Last time I checked, Earth is like probably this size and then I guess 5,000 trillion sizes of the screen you're looking at is the size of space. I think a branch that just is focusing on space is quite viable considering the amount of space space takes up. Okay, and I know like to an extent all the different branches are actually all over the place. I mean, the army works in all the domains and stuff like that. And I, I get the idea, they all have cyber operators and you know, all that stuff. I, I get it, I get it, okay? But they all have their priorities and none of the branches have the priority of space. That's why we need a branch that does. Space and what we do in it are evolving really fast. Technology is going to increase and it will continue to do so at an exponential rate. I meant like exponential. I think that's the graph. I don't know. I haven't taken a math class in like over a year, so I don't know. Anyways, before you know it, we'll be a multi-planet species. And it's not just going to be Americans up there. Other countries will be up there. Aliens might even be up there. I mean, you've seen the entire universe, right, Ernie? You tell them. Aliens. Anyways, we're not going to be alone up there. There's going to be other countries. There could potentially be other life forms. We need to be prepared. And I mean, hey, to kind of branch back on the idea of having delegation towards every single domain, who knows, maybe in the future we might have a separate cyberspace force. I don't know. That's kind of cool. So let's boil this down, okay? Okay, Ernie, I'll get back on topic. What is the future 
of the Space Force going to look like? Missile warning and missile tracking is a huge thing the Space Force is involved in and it will continue to be involved in it as it expands its techniques. Oh, and by the way, Guardians could potentially be making their way to space soon. Current astronauts Colonel Mike S. Hopkins and Colonel Nick Haig have both recently transferred to the Space Force, and the amount of astronauts, as well as military personnel in general, will only be increasing and increasing fast. Also, the influence the Space Force has on many different startups and small businesses is going to only continue to increase. The Space Force has hosted a pitch day in which many startups and small businesses were selected to win large amounts of money towards research or building things for the Space Force. The Space Force is going to be heavily relying and revolving around public and private companies to further the advancement of space technology. Certain companies are focused on satellites in space that will focus on linking military tactical data that can be assessed and used in any ways needed. And the cool part is they're essentially going to work by just connecting themselves to the already currently established data networks. That's kind of cool. And those are on the developmental front, the Space Force is always going to be doing cool things, but there is something very important to talk about, and that's the defensive front. Other countries have been developing space weapons that can destroy entire satellites through electronic warfare, and who knows what countries like Russia, China, and North Korea are doing in secret, amongst many other countries that we may not know of. China could potentially be working on some sort of hypersonic glider meant to replace the ballistic missile and its capabilities based off of an increased maneuverability and increased difficulty in detecting and deflecting. Potential global strikes from space could create entire power shifts on a global scale, and we need to be prepared for any of these advancements at any time. Speaking of advancements, we could literally in a couple of years see things being 3D printed on Mars, or better yet, actual humans on Mars. 20 years ago, only about half of Americans used the internet. Now, almost everybody does. 10 years ago, only about 35% of Americans owned smartphones. Now, over 90% do. Moore's law that computing power doubles about every two years has remained true for the past, since it was composed of in 1965, which I honestly think that's really impressive. I mean, come on, back in what, when the iPhone 6 was a thing? That device on its own was like a million times, million, hundreds of millions of times more powerful than the NASA. Astronaut computers, I'm gonna get that, sorry Ernie. When I mean millions, I mean like 120 million times stronger. That's just, wow, it's, what are we on, like iPhone 13 now, I think? That's crazy. Now, personally, I'd love to see a Space Force that looks a little bit like the Starfleet Command, and maybe in a couple of decades, it'd be really cool to see a United States Space Force Academy, but I think I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I understand that acquisitions and just general development takes a lot of time. But, but I think about that. I think about the potential of us being a multi-planetary species, and I think about us with all of these crazy advancements that have happened in just my lifetime, and I think about it, and I'm like, these ideas, they're not far from reality. They're they're really close. They're they're right around the corner. Okay, maybe the space the Space Force Academy, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch. I, I mean I don't think it's a stretch. I think it, I, I think it'd be really cool. I would go if I if I had the chance to go. I go. But it's only going to accelerate. So many tech companies have been able to create a bunch of really amazing things for the space domain, and the Space Force heavily relies on this movement. Space is hard to tackle. That's why we will continue to need a force focused on one mission and that's space. The 22nd century is approaching fast, and it's to the Space Force to determine and define that future. And that will take time and a lot of preparation, and ultimately the future of the Space Force is gonna be defined by you. I mean, it revolves around you, it revolves around how we operate, it revolves around what we do, what we see, what we wanna see in the future. That's what space is all about. But also, it revolves around what you can bring to the pursuit. More and more careers will be added to the Space Force as threats we once deemed impossible become possible and you'll have the decision to make on whether or not you want to help prepare for a future that, well, you may not be able to see. And that's the cool thing about the Space Force, it's always going to be revolving around things we cannot see, but also, and most importantly, it's going to revolve around all the things that we could possibly imagine. The future of the Space Force should literally just be called the future. The Space Force and its allies will continue to define what our future looks like. I mean, look, things don't just happen. The future wouldn't be exciting if we weren't doing anything to make it exciting. 
If you were here and you were disappointed at the fact that I answered your question with what would the future of the Space Force look like to things that are very, very broad and expanding, well, that's the truth. The Space Force has a lot of developments that we could talk about in a more comprehensive uh, video, but the, the thing is, it, it, it's insane. It, it's, it's a lot of amazing things that are really hard to address, but here's the big picture. Anything you can imagine is possible. Space is an ever-changing and expanding domain, and it is truly miraculous. I-5 is here to keep you up to date on this brave new world that's been up, down, left, right, and, and all around you your entire life. It was a pleasure being your host for the first season of the I-5 Crash Course series, and I really hope to see you in future videos. I hope that I've exposed you to innovation and information that has hopefully impacted, influenced, or inspired you to potentially consider a career in the Space Force, or to simply be really excited for the future that you get to experience. Derek, I said all five eyes, right? Okay, I just, I didn't, I didn't know. I, I, the, by the way, that's the name. That's where the I-5 name came from. Anyways, that's a wrap for me and Ernie. I think we deserve our ice cream break. It's kind of... It's been a while since we've ate any food. I just recorded these all at once. You wanna get some ice cream? Let's go get some ice cream, man. I've been literally craving it for the entire video, dude. This is ridiculous.